Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. We have our butterfly quilt today. I decided to put up as much as I could. Well, it's all there. Not today's that, that I haven't made them all yet, but these are all the ones from prior weeks. They're not all exactly in the same right spot. There's some stuff in here that's not really the right spot, but it fills in color wise so, so that I can kind of see how it's looking. Oh, so we have the last log cabin pieces today, but before we take a look at that, I wanted to tell you that there is an, a channel, I think one of the ambassadors found this, and I don't remember who to thank you again, but uh, there's a Cat's Quilting that did a exhibit of, I guess, um, these butterfly quilts that were done in their shop, you know, different um, students or um, customers in their shop and they did a little uh, display of them an exhibit of them and then walk through and showed them to you up close uh, each individual one so here's a picture of the whole gallery that they had at the time and then they did this YouTube of it so you might the link is in the description box below so it's really fun they have a nice channel too so you might look around and check it out all right and also remember, uh, Kendall is also sewing along on the Butterfly Quilt at his channel, so you can check out his video as well. Let's go to the other side and take a look at the blocks for this week. We are on the last log cabin block, these bunch of little babies here. <laughs> and we'll also talk about half square triangle sort of um, uh, approach let's call it that approach but first let's go through the fabrics used for these last little half log cabins so I've got them all set out here for us to look at and going on whoops using the guide here and the coloration that we're going from so there's let me just show you up close here so you know what you're going for there are groups of them. You have to make 16, and there are two, four, six of this color, two of this, two of this, two of this, two, two. But this one, you have six of them. So there are one set, two, three, four, five, six, six different color sets that you're gonna work with. And they're, you know, not a lot of, not a lot of sewing for them, but maybe a little bit more stitching or, <laughs> cause you're gonna make a few, just a few today. All right, the first set is that dark purple that you'll make more of, and that is up here. Here's one of them, here's one of them, and here's one of them. One, two, three on this side, and three on the other side. So that's why we're making six. And here are the fabrics. The dark purple, the polka dot with the pink dots, this honeycomb, and then the light purple. So that is the first set. Then we will go on to the rest of these, you just make two of each. So the next grouping, we start here and I will show you that is this block. So one on each side. Nope, sorry, sorry. This block. So that's this block, which will be one on each side. And we have the orange floral, the sort of darker orange, the kind of regular pumpkin orange, and then the polka dot. And for this whole group, I am just using the fabrics as is. I'm not gonna add in any of mine because they have a pretty nice, nice mix to them. All right, so the next coloration is an orange in the center and then out to a light. Now those fabrics, most of them are used also in other blocks. So this is the one fabric for this set that is only used in this block. Uh, here it is, there's where the block is located, right there, one, two, three, four fabrics. And so this is the second one, so this one right here. And then we're also going to use, we have this light, we're going to pull the polka dot, and I've lost track where I am, oh, and then that pumpkin, solid. So here are the four now I want to put these back because they're used in the other <laughs> in the other sets. So okay, so we'll put this yellow over here to the side. Then we go into the the sort of really bright um, sort of greeny yellow, and the solid is used twice in the block. So there's only three fabrics: the solid, this print with the gray, and then the yellow honeycomb. 
Okay, two more sets. Now we'll go on to the teal. And the, the teal, there we go. Let me find where it is here. Okay, so that is this block right here. And it's got the teal twice in the middle. And then um, it starts, starts with this, then the teal, the sort of wood grain geode thing. And then that teal, and then the green honeycomb, and then you'll do the teal again in the center. Okay, last one is, we have to pull another fabric again from one of the other piles. So it is right down here on the end of the butterfly wing, this guy here, one on each side. And it starts out with the honeycomb in this kind of the blue shade and then the uh, solid. So that solid here will come over. I think it's that solid. Yeah, that is, that's our solid. That's solid there. And then the uh, print. And then, okay, then the print in the middle, in the center right here. That's a lot of fabrics. A lot of fabrics to keep track of. So there, there is the plan. Use this master and you can come, you know, watch the video again if you need to flip through. But by this time, you kind of get a feel for all these colors. And now I want to talk a little bit about the half square triangles, because at this point, I want to start cut. As soon as I finish these, I want to start cutting half square triangles. The next section is to do those that's the next thing uh, in the pattern is the next the next week but we could work ahead and think ahead and what i want to do is show you it's upside there got the right side up one of the things i want to do is only cut triangles a uh, half square triangles from the fabric that is not in the pies or the wheels i don't want to use the pie or the wheel fabric until I actually make those blocks and see what fabric I have left. I just don't want to get myself in a pickle and have done too much with it and maybe not have enough for the, for the pie or the wheel. So these are the wheels and these are pies right there because they only have like a four sections. The wheels have multiple sections. So any fabric that's used in the wheels and the pies, I will not do half square triangles. Otherwise, I've got the peaches, I've got the yellows um, that I can start looking at. And even uh, some of the teal, not all the teal is used in here. So just whatever is not used. So I will look at those after I finish all of these, <laughs> I will look at those and work on getting um, getting some half square triangles cut. And I will use just use the three inch size uh, square to start with because it's a little more, more frugal. They have it a little bit more generous. I can get it out of a three inch square, get two half square, square triangles that I need. So that's what I'll be doing. All right, I'm gonna sew up one block and meet you on the other side. So here's the first set. So they're tiny. They sew together pretty quickly. Now I have, my mind works better to not chain piece like the first two of every, all of these blocks all at once. I just feel like I would get lost even if I had all these little boards and everything. So I am doing just the ones that are the same and just doing the whole block. So they're doing two at a time. And then the last one will be four of them and I will just chain piece those because I can't lose track of positioning and stuff by, by which block did it go in. I just don't wanna have to keep going back to the chart and look. So it just keeps it nice and tidy to do it one color grouping at a time. And these little guys go spread around as you saw when I was looking at the layout. Um, okay, we also have this week the Jolly Bar and we've got the massive block. It's massive. It is so cool. I love big blocks. <laughs> okay, I said it, I said it. So here's the diagram that you're going to get or the worksheet that you'll get from the Fat Quarter Shop. You can download that so that you know how much to cut for, uh, how many pieces to cut for one. So here's the smaller one. Uh, this is called Stardust. So where's the book? Hold on. For those of you Here is the Jolly Bar book. So in case you uh, forgot what that looks like, it's a, a whole bunch of different quilt patterns and we're doing a sampler and it's a cool sampler. So there's the small one. And now the big mama. <laughs> and it is called, what is it called? Blueprint. 
So in the book, the quilt is to have four of these makes one quilt from the Jolly Bars. Uh, but we are, of course, just making one for our quilt. So this is very fun to do. Big, big, big shapes. So you're using the whole sort of Jolly Bar uh, shape for your flying geese. So that is, that is really fun. Okay. So those now are ready for me to put in the bin because I want to show you that I sewed together the top section because remember I've got a lot going on so I am starting to sew. I have a tip for you as well so you can do uh, as I say and not as I did. <laughs> okay so here is the top of the quilt. So now you can see how wide it is without the bonus border that I gave you. Because remember I gave you a bonus border. So without that, this is how big it is. This is a good size quilt and it's a rectangle. So, you know, we still have sections to do. Now what, what you want to do though, is if you haven't gotten this far, is to see this bottom section from last week's, I think it was last week's block. I had all four of these sewn together, but you need them split. Two for the top and then two for the next horizontal row. So anyway, I believe it tells you that, but you know, if you don't read it, you're not going to know, are you? <laughs> That's why I said, do, do as I, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Is that what you, my dad used to say that one too. He still says it. <laughs> crazy man, crazy man. All right. I have got a little mail call, uh, because I filmed early from Valentine's Day. A few Valentines came in on Valentine's Day, but I had already filmed. This is from Suzanne in New York. Oh, isn't that cute? Look at that. Look, 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 so darling. And from Melody in Alaska, she sent along this super cute little card. Look at this, so sweet. And then I had from Colleen in Indiana, she was going through, she sent me a really nice note and then she was going through magazines and found one of my projects. So this was in McCall's Quick Quilts in 2004 and it's a four part series as you can see for the four seasons. <laughs> These are all great memories when you guys send me this stuff. It's like blast from the past, right? And then I have something so adorable. So this is from Tony in uh, West Virginia. So Tony in West Virginia, and she sent she sent a little card. Let me show you that first. Oh, I thought I pulled that open. Okay, so sweet with a beautiful little note in it. So sweet. And then this is the box. I love these boxes. Look, look how pretty. And it's an ocean box. <gasps> ocean box. Yes, and. Okay, inside are some goodies. <laughs> I think we're getting some Easter stuff now. Here's some hot cocoa. So if it gets hot again, which I, I mean, if it gets cold again, I mean, it's like 69 degrees here today, which is crazy for February, but it will get cold again. And some watermelon peeps. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not sure I can float those ones in the in the coffee. This watermelon might have to just eat them plain. Oh, how cute is this? So you put it in, looks like you put it in your, um, make hot cocoa. Like it has a, it's a bomb, like a cocoa bomb. <gasps> and it's a cute little snowman. How darling is that? Some gummy worms. <laughs> gummy worms and another beautiful pineapple gummies. Oh, those are good. Those are good ones. And I see a few darling selvages down in here to, to add to my things. Aw, look at the leaves. I like that one with the leaves. Oh, this is so nice, Tony. Mwah. Thank you everybody for thinking of me. Now I do want to wrap up and tell you that I did a, f a few different things when I was at the Virginia, Qu the Virginia Quilt Museum on Valentine's Day. Greg and I went down the night before um, just as a special treat and then over to the museum. Today I will tell you a bit about the exhibits that are there right now that are running through March and April. It depends on the exhibits. Some end in March, some end in April. Uh, so if you want to see one of these, you can go to the website to their exhibit page. But I thought I'd just read a little bit about the exhibit and show you some pictures of some of the pieces in it. So let's take a look. Our story 
uh, Human Rights Stories in Fabric. It is an exhibit there till March 22nd. It is 30 powerful pieces from a 62 quilt uh, ex exhibit that was curated by Suzanne Miller-Jones when she issued her third Fiber Arts Challenge in 2017. So these are also really quite incredible quilts, quite moving. This one was done in 1994. It's called Mandela Votes by Margaret Williams. I love the Starstruck exhibit. It is there until April 29th. The stars are super popular as early as the 1800s with quilters. And so these are ones that have uh, quite a, a great mix of things in them. I love this, lo this um, yeah, what is it, Lone Star with the fabric, that fabric that's in the background and how it's all positioned. It is a 1990s quilt uh, replicating a common pattern from the 19th century, century made by Hazel Carter. Another one is Peace Stars by Melinda Jane Flint, circa 1860. It was donated by Aline Blessings. Uh, it is... Um, Melinda Flint was a homemaker, having become a family, uh, a farmer's wife in 1853. Her husband fought in the Civil War and died a prisoner at Elmira, New York in 1864. Uh, this pattern is sometimes referred to as the Ohio Star pattern, which originated in 1815. The quilt features a yellow vertical zigzag sashing, uh, and it is just just so cool to see it in person and that one block there looks like there's something missing but there's not that is just the way it is <laughs> so the fabric faded that's why it looks like that there's a huge Ginny Bio retrospect. It is an incredible exhibit. If you've not seen Ginny's quilts in person, get yourself there to the museum before April 8th, as it's the last day of the exhibit. Uh, Ginny is a Virginia quilter. She lives just actually the next town over from me. And they have everything from her original uh, grandmother's flower garden to this spectacular windows. And I have a couple close-ups I did of the windows here so that you could uh, see it. Just, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just hard to describe this one. I think they did like a hundred quilts of the of the century or something and hers was right up there at the top but the and she hand pieces so this is all hand pieced and hand quilted you can probably see the quilting a little bit in those close-ups that i gave you all right and i believe this is another one yeah this one is called soaring high and it's a tessellations and i remember when jenny was really into the tessellations i took a workshop she came to my guild and she did a workshop on tessellations almost like really early on in her exploration of those shapes those types of shapes and i love this one i mean this is with her fabrics and it is quite quite spectacular Okay, uh, another exhibit is the Connie B. Broy. It's cur curated by Trudy Van Dyke. Uh, Connie is a Virginia quilter, and she has been uh, just a lifetime of work. And the whole exhibit was just a lot of different styles and pieces of her work over the years. And I'm going to show you this one. It's called Windows of My Mind, and I'm going to back you through it. Uh, this, this quilt was made in 1998. It's original design and award-winning exhibit in St. Louis, Missouri. But I'm going to back you through it from the from the center here out to the next level. Okay, hold on, out to the full quilt. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's that is definitely looks like a window. And the piece is so just so you get reference, 55 by 74. So it is a wall hanging size. And this is a really beautiful exhibit of her work, uh, and you'll you'll really enjoy it. It was so lovely. It was so lovely. And I have two other things now to show you. One will, of course, be about the Harrisonburg quilt, and that will be next Tuesday, which is our Harrisonburg block day. And then the other thing is extra special, and I have to sort of uh, get the video part of it organized. So I don't know whether I'll show you that before next Tuesday or after. I'm, th I'm hoping before. So maybe it might be for Saturday. So we'll see if I get it organized. All right. We are, you are so, we, the Royal We are butterfly blocks. We have a bunch of these little guys to make uh, and cutting them and sewing them is super easy. Just uh, get it done. So I've got my boards out. I've got a group of boards. I'm just going to cut them all, lay them out, be able to sew them easy. And then your, your Jolly Bar, you've got the small one and the big mama. <laughs> what a big block, huh? 
So cool. All right, my friend, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.